Welcome to Econa Day Unplugged. Today is Tuesday, May 1. I am Ann Picker, Econa Day's Chief Economist, and with me today are Mark Pender in the U.S. and Jeremy Hawkins in London. Jeremy, this is an important week for the ECB. Tell us about it. As you say, it's a potentially an extremely important week for the ECB. Just to quickly go back to last Thursday, we had the central bank announcing, as universally expected, no changes to any kind of policy. But it does kind of acknowledge the fact that there's been what appears to have been a fairly significant slowdown in eurozone growth over the course of the last quarter or so. Now, increasingly, what we're starting to see now is you know, analysts beginning to question whether or not they're actually going to be able to cut off um, quantitative easing once we get to this so-called soft September end date. Now, with that in mind, we have a couple of key indicators this week. So uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, we'll get the first look at actually what happened to first quarter Eurozone GDP in the shape of the preliminary flash estimate. And then um, on Thursday, we'll get the flash HICP, the inflation figures for April as well. Now, what do we know about the, the GDP numbers? Well, so far, just from some of the, the national data, flash French first quarter GDP slowed from a 0.7% quarter on quarter rate. So what, that's 2.8% annualized down to just 0.3% on the quarter or 1.2% annualized um, in the first quarter. Within that, we saw a domestic demand slow quite significantly as well. Spain held up. That's still growing quite nicely, about 0.7% on a quarter on quarter basis. Um, we don't really have too many other of the big countries yet, but we do know that German retail sales are really struggling. Earlier on this week, we saw a fourth consecutive monthly fall in volume sales in Germany, and indeed, they've now fallen in five of the last six months. So it looks increasing as if we're going to see a pretty soft number for first quarter GDP for the Eurozone as a whole. The current market call is about 0.4%, so what's that? 1.6% if we annualize it to put it onto a US basis. Basis, and that will be down from 0.6 on a quarter or 2.4% um, on a US basis. So how we want to look at this, it looks as if there has been a fairly significant slowdown during the first three months of the year. And indeed, I think the risk, if anything, we could actually see something in coming in softer than that. Now, in terms of inflation news, well, it looks as if we could see a slight pick up the inflation rate on Thursday. So this will be the flash estimate for April. So we're currently running at 1.3 percent an annual inflation rate and market expectations about 1.4 percent. But from what we saw coming out of Germany yesterday, I think there's a pretty good chance we could actually see the core rates move in the opposite direction. So the narrow core rate at the moment is only running at a 1 percent rate. If we were to see that move down below 1%, it's really going to start making it extremely difficult, I think, for the, you know, the ECB to justify ending its quantitative easing program. And that, I think, is already starting to impact in particular way the, you know, the way the euro is operating at the moment. We've seen a, a fairly sharp loss of the euro against the majors, particularly the dollar over the course of the last few weeks. So it really does seem to be the case that you know, economic weakness in the eurozone is beginning to impact the currency. Um, the same can really be said for the poor old pound as well, which has really had it in the neck over the last week or so. First quarter GDP out of the UK released back end of last week. That was up just 0.1% on a quarter on quarter basis. Now, that's the worst performance we've seen by the UK since the fourth quarter of 2012. Now, we talked in previous weeks that there's been bad weather in Europe, which could have impacted some of these numbers. Well, we don't know the real results that for Europe. But as far as the UK is concerned, the stats guys over here are saying that, yes, bad weather did hit retail sales and construction in towards the back end of February and early in March. But by and large, the economy as a whole actually ignored it and you know, basically did its own thing. So effectively, we'd be talking about you know, a genuine underlying deceleration economic activity, activity in the UK. If we put that together with what a surprisingly weak inflation report for March, you know, not long ago, everyone was just assuming that a Bank of England tightening next week at their May meeting was a done deal. Well, now increasingly, it looks as if they're going to have to push that tightening further out. And that, as I mentioned, very much weighing upon the pound as well. So in a nutshell, really what I say, I think that first quarter European growth uh, be it Eurozone or the UK is coming in at very disappointing rates and you know the kind of ideas people had before about either ending QE or actually increasing interest rates in the UK, they appear to be rapidly going out the window. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, 
the calculation of GDP for first quarter, as you know, we have problems over here in the States in terms of the seasonality and the like. Um, do problems like that exist for the Eurozone? They do. I think um, it's fair to say that when we have you know, really strong seasonal factors and be it in GDP or be it employment, then at the end of the day, all we can hope is that the statistics guys who have to seasonally adjust these numbers get their seasonal adjustment factors correct. Of course, at the end of the day, we never actually know what the appropriate seasonal adjustment factor itself is because we can only estimate it. But I think it's perfectly fair to say that there has been some unusually poor weather um, this winter for continental Europe and the UK, which has biased down growth. But I say, for what it's worth, at least as far as the UK goes, it looks as if the impact, although it's been negative, it hasn't been strongly negative. So if we do get poor Eurozone numbers on Wednesday for real GDP, it's going to reflect an underlying slowdown. And the ECB is not going to be happy about that. Thanks, Jeremy. Mark, it's only Tuesday, mm. but you've been quite busy <laughs> with a yes. bunch of new US data. Well, it's interesting listening to Jeremy because um, I think we're, the U.S. has a, a, a very different story. Um, uh, we did get a 2.3% GDP rate for the first quarter, and consumer spending was down. But questions of seasonality here aren't really that uh, uh, convincing. Uh, there's uh, wide indications of a slowing in consumer spending uh, aside from just – the government's numbers, which of course is a big contrast uh, to the levels of uh, consumer confidence, which keep pushing to new, uh, uh, you know, uh, generational highs, and of course uh, that follows the the tax cut. But that certainly hasn't seemed to have uh, stimulated. Um, the consumer, but that again is kind of a, a background question right now. We're in April, actually we're ending April, this is May 1st, and we're getting now April numbers, uh, consumer numbers, and they're coming in uh, pretty uh, pretty solid. It looks like uh, the consumer did pick up the pace in March, certainly. If you look at those first quarter numbers, you'll see that there is a, a bias toward the end of the quarter as far as strength goes. And we're getting, like I say, uh, vehicle sales. But what's really the underlying critical thing here? Uh, in the U.S. is what's happening to inflation, and specifically what's happening to the comparison, uh, the year-on-year -year comparison. Uh, inflation is, uh, in, in general, um, and the Fed's target, the Federal Reserve's target, is, uh, is in a year-on-year -year basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in this time last year, it was a very weak period for inflation. It was not only prescription drugs were going down, but you had wireless services going down. And these are marginal things uh, in proportion to the whole uh, price basket, but they have an effect. And, uh, and what we're getting now is we're, we're entering a, a series of months where the comparisons are going to be very, very easy. So we saw the core PCE price index yesterday for March, which is the central price uh, indicator for the Federal Reserve. It's their own. Uh, uh, it's their own personal indicator, and uh, it is at 1.9%. It, it rose three uh, uh, tenths in a month. Uh, the Econo Day's consensus was actually for a 2% reading. Um, and this is really, this means that they're on target. All of a sudden, we're an inflation target. And it's not going to fade uh, in the next month or two because the comparisons are so easy. So now the Federal Reserve is at a point where um, – uh, their uh, their inflation goal is being met. At the same time, we're getting very clear signs of capacity stress in the economy, whether the factory sector or the construction sector. Again, report after report has, uh, you know, incredibly high readings for input costs, uh, very strong readings for a price traction that means pr uh, pass through to customers and delivery times are are uh, uh, keep lengthening and lengthening and lengthening and and this isn't this has been a trend going on for the last year in data going back to World War II, and these are extremes. Uh, so these small samples of, uh, we had the ISM this morning, uh, are, are, are telling us something, if, if we want to uh, observe it, and certainly the Federal Reserve, uh, certainly the hawks, the price hawks, and they're, uh, they're meeting this week, of course, uh, they're meeting today uh, with a statement due tomorrow. Um, and this can't go past their radar. So they, so the, the bias very clearly for the U.S. is toward a more rate hikes and not fewer rate hikes. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I have two central banks that met 
um, in Asia. The Bank of Japan, which was last Friday, left its key monetary policy unchanged. However, they did update their forecasts and their median forecast for the annual change in the consumer price index, excluding fresh food, which is what the Bank of Japan uses as for measuring its inflation target, is now 1.3% in the current fiscal year, which ends the end of March 2019. That's down from 1.4% in their previous forecasts. And they've also revised up their GDP growth forecast to 1.6% for the current fiscal year, up from 1.4%. That's a year-on-year comparison. Um, After pushing back the target date for reaching its 2% inflation target six times, the BOJ has decided to remove its target date. According to Governor Kuroda, the reason for eliminating the target date was to prevent the market from speculating on bank policy. There was a market tendency to see the date as a deadline and to seek a correction between forecast and policy actions. He noted that it was going to happen one day, and today was the day, meaning last Friday, that that the target date would disappear. Earlier today, the Reserve Bank of Australia also left its policy interest rate unchanged at 1.5%. It's been there since August 2016. They opine that both wage growth and inflation remain low. The RBA, however, expects solid employment growth in the period ahead, with the unemployment rate expected to fall gradually from its recent level of around 5.5%. But the RBA, interestingly, expects low growth rate, low wage growth, rather, to linger, but that a stronger economy should see some lift in wages over time. Uh, that's about it for today. That's about it for today.